Hi there, it's Monica with It's Just Sewing, and today I am going to teach you how to make the easiest quilt on the planet. And it's not even a quilt. So come along, I'm going to show you how it's done. It's easy, fun, and fuss free. So we've got our quilting cotton and we've got our flannel and what I want to start by doing is preparing our fabric to feed right through the sewing machine because I am going to show you the coolest trick to make your sewing experience so much quicker, so much more efficient and I'm actually going to save you money on thread. Um, so wait for that. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by collating. What we're going to do is we're going to take our first cotton or I'm sorry flannel square, we're going to lay it down and then and there's no right or wrong side to this flannel, so you can lay it either way and it's totally fine. And then we're gonna take our um, fabric, the quilting fabric, the one that's patterned, and lay it right on top with the pretty side facing up. That's also known as the right side, so right side facing up. And then we'll take the next flannel and see how I've just turned it a little bit? That's what I mean by collating. So we're gonna go ahead and every other one go back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so we're getting ready to chain piece and the objective for our rag quilt is we'll eventually sew from one corner to the other and then this corner to this corner. But in order to be more efficient, we are just going to focus on doing this corner to this corner with all of them first. And I'm gonna show you how to do that with using little to no excess uh, threads. So let's get started. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and in my corner and start sewing corner to corner just like that now as I get to the end of this uh, square what I'm going to do is grab another one and hug it up right behind the previous one that was sewn Remember, I'm not overlapping them. What I'm doing is just hugging them right up next to each other and they're feeding through with just a small amount of thread in between. Okay, so now that you've done your chain stitching on one side, what you're gonna find is that you will have a chained piece of squares, which is fabulous. Um, there's just a little bit of thread connecting each one, so you can do a couple of different things. You can either grab a pair of scissors and cut in between, or my favorite technique is I like to use the thread cutter on the side of my sewing machine, so that is also an option. Look how much quicker that is. All right, so now what you need to do is, you don't need to worry about organizing them too, um, too much. What you're gonna do is you're just going to pop the next ones in and sew corner to corner that hasn't been sewn yet. So traditionally, people will tell you that when you're assembling a rag quilt, you should assemble everything first and then clip at the end. But recently, I decided to flip that around and after I got done chain piecing, I fringed first before assembly. I can't even tell you what a world of difference it's made. So I'm going to show you now how to fringe and we'll get started. Alright, so we're going to start fringing. and. Basically what we want to do is we want to snip all the way around the perimeter of each of the squares, okay? And what I have found is um, fringing about a half inch in, about a quarter inch apart is totally adequate. Later on, you might get so into it that you just wanna go fringe crazy and that's awesome. But for now, I think it's best when you're doing a huge quilt and you're just getting started to go ahead and just do about a half inch in and a quarter inch apart. All right, so now it's the design portion. And you guys, I cannot stress this enough. Let us not overthink the design process because it's gonna look cute no matter what, I promise, okay? So if you, once you've laid everything out, just see if it feels balanced to you. I'm sure it's gonna look lovely. Just don't overthink it. The final thing is I would get out your cell phone and I would take a picture before you start organizing it so you have a reference point if you need to go back to it as you're assembling. 
Okay, so I have my first set of squares ready to assemble my first row. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the first, the top square, and if you ever have a hard time remembering which one is the top, you can always put a pin in it so it reminds you. And we are going to put it next to our second square. And notice that I have the flannels touching. I know this is counterintuitive, but we actually want the fringe or the raw edges to show on this quilt. So you're gonna hug those up together you're gonna pop them in and I would suggest after using a half inch uh, uh, cut whenever you're doing your fringe I would actually suggest that you use a one inch seam allowance because I think it gives you a huge margin of error okay so here we go we're gonna go ahead and sew all the way down Take that out and it's going to look like this with the raw edge. Now if it looks like it's a big seam allowance, don't freak out because it's going to look so good once you wash it, I promise. Alright, so now we're on to the next one. Again, remember flannels together. Okay, so it's time to assemble row to row. And I can't even believe that we're at this point. We're almost done. So I've got my first row and I want to get it um, ready to assemble with my second row. Now we're doing a baby size right now, so that's why it looks a little smaller, but you can always double your size or make it as large as you want. But here's our first row and this is the first square, that upper left hand square. And the one that it's going to butt up next to is going to be the red one that goes right underneath. So again, I'm going to put flannel to flannel, but I'm gonna tell you that sometimes, since you are new to sewing, sometimes you don't always follow the best seam allowance. Not a big deal at all, because what you can do, see how I'm off just a little on that side? I'm gonna split the difference. So I'm gonna start in the middle, and I'm gonna line it up, and that way, if there's any overage or underage on either side, it will work itself out because it's not too extreme. I don't have inches on either side. This is going to be like maybe a half inch on this side and a half inch on the other side. Not a big deal because once we start uh, giving this a good wash and dry, it's all going to work itself out in the wash. All right, so I'm ready to sew row to row and I have found my center point. So what I like to do is I line these up. We're going to use the exact same seam allowance, one inch, and I start actually in the middle. This is a technique that I've kind of figured out along the way after doing probably close to 100 rag quilts, and that's not even an exaggeration. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and start in the middle, and I'm going to give it a few stitches. And I am going to back stitch at this point only because I'm starting in the middle. All right. Now when I get to the area where I'm going over multiple layers, I just slow down, okay? I find that slowing down makes all the difference. Right off the edge. Okay. Okay. Same thing. Now I'm just going to line it up at that middle point again. Yep, there's going to be a lot of strings. You're going to clean it up at the end. Okay. So I'm going to sew a few, back stitch, sew on down. And right off the edge. And look at what we have! Two rows sewn together. Isn't that fabulous? Now I just need to finish the rest. Finally, our rag quilt is assembled. Doesn't it look fabulous? Okay, I'm gonna have us pan in really close because I wanna show you just a few things. All right, so now that we're up close, I want you to take a look at something. See how the fringe looks clipped? It doesn't look really sweet and fluffy yet. Well, that is because we haven't washed or dried it yet. When we wash and dry, that is where the magic really happens. So the couple of things that you wanna do before you pop it into the washer is you wanna take your scissors and you wanna cut any excess threads. Now I've already done this, but you'll find threads all throughout and you just wanna cut those down so that they are good to go after you've washed and dried. 
The second thing is you want to make sure, even though we're panning in, you can't see this right now, but what you want to do is you want to sew along the entire perimeter of the quilt because that's going to lock in all of the stitches so they're not going to go anywhere um, from when we, we did our rows to rows. All right, this lady's headed to the washer and dryer now. I can't wait for her to get all beautiful and give you the big reveal. All right, I cannot even believe this. We are done with our rag quilt, and I have to tell you, I loved it so much that I ended up doubling the size, and I'm using it as a bed runner at my house, which reminds me, I actually don't have pillowcases that match, so maybe that will be the next tutorial. All right, so now I wanna take you up close and personal so you can actually see what it looks like now that it's been laundered and dried and cleaned up. So now that we're up close, you can really see the effect of washing and drying and what it does to a rag quilt. All of this fringe is so fluffy and loved and worn, and that's the effect we're really going for with our rag quilt. So the great thing about this is that every time you wash it and dry it, it just continues to look more fluffy, more worn, and more loved. And that really is the appeal of the rag quilt. I promised you this would be the easiest quilt on the planet, and I delivered. Now it's your turn. I want you to get out there, and I want you to be fearless and be creative and have fun with this, with this project. If you're interested, we do have rack quilt kits available at shop.itsjustsewing.com. But if you're making this for a baby or a friend or even for yourself, I promise you're going to love this whole entire experience. It really is fun. So thank you so much for watching. It was great having you and I look forward to seeing you soon. Don't forget, follow us at itsjustsewing.com for more fun tutorials. Bye! Thank you.